Right, there we go. You're listening to Scotty McClue's Late Night Megaphone in. The uh, time's coming up to half past 11 o'clock. Heavens above. And uh, we're talking to Karen from Eccles. Are you all right, lovey? Are you? Are you? You're hey, all right. I'm okay, babes. Are you all right? Yeah, not bad. Sorry for keeping you. The wizard said he cut you off. Yeah. <laughs> he says he didn't mean to, but I'm not so sure. <laughs> I'll keep that one to myself. Keep that one to yourself, love. Keep that one in reserve. Yeah. Keep that one up your jumper. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Is you all right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm phoning about this bully subject. Yes, yeah. love. And it is a very serious subject. Very serious. Yeah. I mean, f there's two points I've got to make on it. First of all, I got bu when I was bullied a lot when I was at school, yeah. um, from the ages of about 11 upwards until I left school. And at one stage, I had to get moved out of a school because I got beat up at it. Oh, dear. And that they didn't... Uh, well, my parents went to the school. They didn't do anything about it, so I moved. Yeah. Mm. So it is a serious subject. And it does... It leaves deep-rooted scars, you know, in, even into your adulthood. Like, mm -hmm. it, you know, um, stops you being able to make friends as easily and stuff like that because you're always scared that people you meet are going to be the same as the people you were at school with. Yeah. So, I mean, it is serious, and something has got to be done about it. But, I mean, they, they there's a lot of... What, what do you think could be done, Karen? Well, I don't know, because the schools say they've got zero tolerance to the problem. But the trouble is, we've got a, an incident recently where, um, at my son's school, he's been bullied a couple of times, and the ch they've sort, they have sorted it out, I admit. They've been good. But my boyfriend's son goes to a school, and he was refusing to go to school because he said he was being bullied. And when they went to the school to sort it out, they said that basically the child was lying and wouldn't sort, And there was, there was nothing they could do because they reckon the child's lying and won't even take it seriously. So, I mean, it has, something has got to be done, and I, I don't know, because kids are, kids are kids and they'll do whatever they want, whether you, you know, stop them or not. And I don't know if, if there is an easy answer, but, you know, I mean... I once, you know, I just thought that maybe, you know, if you told children what the adults were like when, you know, that the adults turn out to be like that they've bullied. Because, like, when a bully bullies a child, when they grow up, they don't even think about the child's children they've bullied. But the children who've been bullied grow up with deep scars that live with them forever. Why, they, do you, why do you think a child would bully another child? Because I think, you know, they're going through problems themselves and maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's things, because I know that a lot of, some of the people that bullied me ended up with uh, teenage pregnancies, we had problems at home and stuff like that. So do you think that the child bullies because they've seen bullying at home? Yeah, I think they're, bu no, they're bullying as a, as a way of hitting out at the world, and they're picking on kids that are vulnerable. You see, it's interesting, I mean, what, you know, this is a very big problem here, because we're talking yeah. about almost a quarter of primary school children. I know, and that's bad. You know, I mean, there's always been bullying, there's always a kind of uh, people trying to see if they can push the boat out and be top dog or whatever. Oh, yeah, I mean, there's always mm -hmm. one kid that wants to boss the other kids. And there's always a kid that's different and or get picked on because they're different. But, you know, it's got to be more equal. I mean, it doesn't help, you know, like with these designer trainers, designer clothes and stuff like that. Because there's kids that, a kid whose parents can't afford them. Yeah. So they get bullied because they haven't got them. I was thinking the other way. How yeah. is it that the kids that haven't got them, uh, yeah. do they not want to bully the ones that have? Well, when I was at school, I got bullied for various reasons, including not being, not keeping up with the fashions, not doing what some of the other girls were doing and stuff like that. Right. And, yeah. But I mean, why should you keep up with the fashion? Well, you shouldn't have to, but there's kids at school that make you feel like... See, why not? You see, people who keep up with the fashion are actually the, the silly sheep that follow the herd. Well, yeah, that's... That's and if what you, I think now. If you set your own fashion, like, say, you set the Karen from Eccles fashion, <laughs> then says, God, I wouldn't mind looking like Karen from Eccles, I'll tell you. Well, there's too much importance on what you look like, and 
and being this, that, and the other these days. See, there was a guy saying earlier, he says, how are you not on the telly, Scotty? You know what I mean? And all the rest of it. Now, you look what I look like. You see, I'm not a, I'm not a blonde 20-something female. No, I mean... With, with, a, with a, a, you know, a large set of throat knees. Well, I mean, here's the thing, yeah. So, you, you, you know, I mean, you can't really put a man in a flat cap and a tweed jacket on the telly, can you? No. <laughs> you know what I mean? People well, might watch him. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> People might watch the programme. <laughs> we don't want that, do we? <laughs> he might become a star. <laughs> well, here's the thing. You see? You, you have peer pressure, yeah? You see, the telly companies are paranoid about even putting a fatty on. Even although, even although the bulk of us are actually fatties. So you've got imagery everywhere around you, yeah? Yeah. So here's the thing, you have peer pressure, yeah? Yes. I mean, when did you last see me advertising beauty cream on the telly? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, you, you know, you have the peer pressure, yeah? Yes. Where, for example, you have your gangs behind the bike shed smoking, yeah? Yes. Now, if you well, don't... you don't have to go behind the no, bike sheds but and the smoke. point is, if you don't, yeah? Yeah. You're square. You're square. Yeah, you get beat up because you don't want to do what they're doing, yeah? Yes. That's just one I, one scenario, yeah? Yes. Well, then you may have all the girls in your year... Well, why don't you do yeah. what I used to do in school, you know, and yeah. you have your square gang? But and I you say to it. them, you say to the, the, the smokers or whatever, you say, any more of that and we'll do you. Well, actually, any more of this bullying and we'll do you. <laughs> well, to be honest, there was a lot of girls that were really pleased when I joined the school because it meant they weren't being bullied anymore. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but that doesn't sort it really, does it? No, it, it doesn't. You know? I mean, I can laugh at that bit, but yeah. it's not funny really because it does leave you scared you know like you walk around and yes. you're like scared that people are like and they like pick on you still and they're not cause i still i still i still, I still get people. bullied by women never <laughs> never by men <laughs> <laughs> i mean whatever men, men never come up to you and order you to dance with them <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> all these big buds come up and tell me you're dancing and that's it <laughs> And I say, I can't dance, love me, well, he's a tied together. <laughs> well, I mean, one idea, yeah, yeah, is they have all these workshops going around schools now, don't they, for things like drugs and, yep. and other things. Well, maybe they could have workshops for... Alcohol like, and all that stuff. And maybe they could have it for bullying as well. They and, can do. Yeah, I mean, show, like, the kids what how a bully victim really feels and... And stuff like that. That's maybe, a very that's a very good idea. Maybe adults like me could go around the schools talking to kids to tell them what they've doing to future adults. Very good like idea. That. I yeah. don't know. Some of it's got to be done anyway. Well, it's got to be stopped before somebody gets seriously hurt. You know. Because all I'm saying is, like the children, when they leave school and become adults, they're left with scars, and the ones that have been bullies don't even think about it. Ridiculous. Yeah. But, I mean... It has what, what do you think of the small bee on the forehead? No, I don't think that's a good idea. Why not? I don't know, because it's... I don't know. All right, love, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to the rest of the nation, because they're all going bananas yeah. here. Yeah, OK. I'm not, I mean, I'm not sure about a tattoo, but maybe a badge. A badge to say I am a bully? Yeah, a so one badge or something. All right, then. Because it gives them room for reform. You know, a bit like when you go to prison. Yes. You come out and you've like, if you've changed, you like. But I don't uh, think prison they do the arrows on the suits nowadays. No. See, I, mean, I suggested one night if you're in the nick, your kids should have to wear arrows and suits to school. No, I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> I think that would work. Or maybe if they wore a so on motif, yeah. Yes. And if they reformed and they stopped bullying and they actually helped the people they bullied and became friends with them, right? And reform became reformed with them. So you could have like bull bullies anonymous. Yeah. Then yep. they could pick the badge off again and say, "Okay, you've been good. You haven't bullied anyone. You can stop wearing so the badge." So you're worried about the tattoo because it's permanent. Yeah. All right, babes. All right. Then. Hey, dinky do. You take care. Thanks. Ta dinky do. Bye, Bye now, dinky do. Scotty McClue's late night phone in. Have you found yet? Thank you, dude.